made up. My mind is made up. I'm sold out. I am sold out. And my mind's made up. My mind is made up. I'm sold out. I am sold out. And my mind's made up. My mind is made up. I'm sold out. I am sold out. From the love of Jesus, not death nor life. Jesus paid the price. Now I'm free from sin. I am so out, and my mind's made up. My mind is made up. I'm so out. I am so out, and my mind's made up. My mind is made up. Who can separate us? Who can separate us from the love of? Jesus, not death nor life. Jesus paid the price. Now I'm free from sin. I am so out. There is a 
It's worth, it sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, oh how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus.
is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Oh, let's give him praise tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, Lord Jesus, universal and supreme head of the church. Oh, we bow to you in our spirit, hallelujah, in our soul, our high priest, our advocate, intercessor, mediator, guarantor of the covenant. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Oh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we love you, we praise you, we adore you. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. We receive the life of the blood, the power of the blood. In the name of Jesus, the authority of the blood, the blood that speaks of better things than that of Abel, we receive it, Father. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We give you praise tonight. Be glorified in this service. Oh, God, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand and in your sight. Thank you for being the Lord our God that heals us and takes sickness out of our midst. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and greet your brothers and your sisters tonight. And while they're doing that, let me welcome you. Thank you for joining us tonight right here at Victory Christian Center, our midweek service. We welcome you. We thank you for joining us tonight. Call family members, friends, co-workers, neighbors. Invite them to come to church with you tonight by subscribing to our YouTube channel. And again, thank you for being in service tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, singers, so very much. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening, y'all. All right. Welcome to our midweek service. So honored to have you with us tonight. We love you so very, very much. And uh, don't really have prayer requests. Let's just pray the normal things we pray. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up all men everywhere. As you will all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Draw men and women to you by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Thrust out laborers into the harvest, we ask in Jesus' name. We pray for those in political positions, not just in this nation, but around the world, that there will be divine visitations, divine encounters, that each one might come to know and understand that you are God, and one day they will have to stand before you. God, remove from office each one that refuses to know you. Just God, just get them out of office, Lord, and replace them with men and women of God in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon these United States of America in Jesus' name. Thank you for divine intervention in the affairs of this nation, and we believe for that in Jesus' name. God, we call our borders closed by faith. We come against the spirit of socialism and Marxism, communism in the name of Jesus. God, we call our economy turned around in Jesus' mighty name. God, you know what needs to be done, Father. We just ask for your divine intervention in the name of Jesus in every area of our nation. Father, give attention to it, we ask, and we do thank you for that. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and prosperity within its walls, divine protection around Israel. Give the prime minister insight, wisdom, guidance, understanding, God, relative to what's going on in, their, in, in his nation, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, and how to turn some things around there. And God, we thank you for that. Bless every ministry gift, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. God, deliver us from unreasonable and wicked men. Give us fresh oil, fresh anointing, guidance, wisdom in Jesus' name. Meet the need of every ministry gift, God and their family. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. All right, I believe that's done. Amen. Okay, let's see. Uh, 
Mrs. Finch, along with myself, we're sending thank you to all of the volunteers that are going to be participating in the Mark 414 project. She wants you to know, however, if you were reached out to relative to uh, your schedule and you have not returned a phone call or talked with someone relative to that, they need you to please, 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 volunteers who received a voicemail or email for follow-up, Please contact the, uh, Manisha Lafette, Lafette, Lafayette, Lafette. Okay, anyway, Manisha, I know Manisha. All right, please contact Manisha no later than this Friday, December 3rd, if at all possible. If you have questions, please contact the missions office. All right, let's have our video announcements, please. Victory family, especially our online viewing audience, if you've already downloaded the VCC Church app, you probably noticed this past Sunday that when you received app notifications from us, you were able to experience an all new live stream experience. We now offer a live picture in picture view of all our services within the app. For now, we will still make our live stream available on our YouTube channel and Facebook page, but our content is exclusively hosted on our app and we'll soon be offering you special content only available to our VCC Church app audience. So, if you haven't downloaded our VCC Church app yet, be sure to download it today. We are so glad you joined us for our service here at Victory, where we are touching and changing lives for the glory of God. Please pay attention to the following announcements. Ladies, the final LOV Vesper service of the year will be held on this Friday at 7.30 p.m. at Campus 3. Dress is casual. Please join us for this time of fellowship and getting along with God. The Victory Christian Center Church Youth Basketball League is holding practices on Saturdays from 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. This league is for children of Victory ages 5 to 12 years old. Practices are held in the VCC Youth Building Gymnasium. This Sunday, Pastor Gould will be meeting with those who have completed their new members' classes. The meeting will be held at 5.30 p.m. in the Victory Youth Building Dining Room. Journey to Joy, our ministry to widows and widowers will be having a Christmas brunch next Saturday, December 11th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Victory Youth Building Dining Room. Come and enjoy a time of fellowship, food, and fun. The cost is $15. Sign up at the booth across from the Word Shop by Wednesday, December 8th. The Food and Clothing Ministry is accepting boys' coats in all sizes. The Food and Clothing Ministry is also in need of diapers in all sizes, especially sizes 4, 5, and 6. Please drop off items at the Dome Food and Clothing Room before and after service or on weekdays 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. at Campus 3, 6916 Old Pineville Road. Thank you in advance. Greetings, church family. We are excited about the VCCS basketball season, and we want you to join in on the action. We have launched the VCCS Spirit Store. When you attend the basketball games this season, we want you to show up in style. The store is open through December 3rd and will close automatically at the end of the business day on the 3rd. The store can be accessed at fancloth.shop xbm7a. Thank you for watching the VCC announcements. And don't forget, you can find these announcements, events, and more on the new and improved VCC Church app. Get it in Google Play or the iTunes and Amazon app stores today. All right. We appreciate those announcements. Uh, on the school side, uh, next Tuesday at 7 o'clock here in the Dome, the VCCS will be presenting a special uh, Christmas program. And so we want to bring that before you. And hopefully you can come out the 14th. Oh, not next week, the week after. All right, so next Tuesday. They got, all right, December the 14th is the t date for that particular school program. All right, and one last thing on my end here. The uh, JV boys, varsity girls, varsity boys will be competing in an away game against uh, in away games against Charlotte Christian for those of you that would like to uh, attend and support them. And our varsity girls will play a game on Saturday in Rock Hill at 3.30 against Burlington School at the Legion Collegiate 
Legion Collegiate Academy. And then on Friday, our varsity boys will be playing an away game against Elevation Prep, and that game will be at 7 o'clock. So we want you to be aware of the away games, particularly against Charlotte Christian. Usually we show out in great numbers or good numbers anyway to support our basketball teams. All right, you ready to give? If you're in need of an offering envelope, if you would, please uh, just lift your hand at this time. Ushers are headed in your direction. I don't know. <laughs> thank you, baby. All right, anyone else in need of an offering envelope? I want to say thank you so much for your faithfulness and your giving. Minister Tony Smith is going to come and exhort us tonight. Praise God. Good evening. We good? I'm good. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, Malachi 3.10, and uh, just the first verse of 11. I know it's the same old scripture. Hey, don't get tired of this, okay? Don't get tired of this. I'm telling you, I think we, we, we're familiar with those uh, scriptures that we say a lot, but you got to eat it, okay? Eat this. A lot of power is in this, okay? It says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me. Say, prove me. That's a bold statement. Hey. Prove it to me. He's challenging you. I think he can back that up. Somebody's talking like that. Sound like they can back that up. Okay? He said, prove me. Now herewith, say of the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. We have a God that will fight for us. You hear me? It's a lot in there. Don't just keep reading over that and you know that's one of your little scriptures. Listen, that is powerful. Okay? He is fighting for us. He's challenging you. Hey, hey, let me show you how to do it. He's a good God. Uh, uh, listen, he, he's not just talking. Okay? He wants to show you. I will bag this up. We have a God that will fight for us. In, in the book of Judges, it was... um. Uh, when Gideon was told to turn down the altar of his uh, father when they was uh, serving Baal, some of y'all familiar with that? Anyhow, he was told to tear down the altar. They were serving Baal. And he did it. He did it at nighttime. He didn't want to do it in the uh, daytime. He was scared. So he did it at night. And in the morning, they woke up and said, Man, who did this? You know, and then they found out, okay, it was your son, Joel. It was your son. So they said, send him out here. We're going to kill him. And the father said, hey, 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 I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He said, hey, ho, 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 if he's a God, let him plead for himself. Okay, listen, our God fights for us. Okay, he's not bail. He's not false. He fight for you. Once you put it in his hands, he just wants your obedience. Okay, once you do that, listen, it's a done deal. Okay, so tonight, once you put it in his hands, it's a done deal. Don't wrestle no more. 1,500 is nothing to him. 15,000 is nothing to him. You just give him your obedience. Praise God. I'm going to stop right there because I know pastor ready to preach. Praise God. If you're in need of it, uh, any more, anyone else need to be uh, ministered to, raise your hand again. And if not, you're, if you're writing a check, you may write it Victory Christian Center or you may abbreviate VCC. I don't see any hands. So let's worship our God. Those that come, normally come down, let's do that now. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. You're good to us. You are good to us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, that you set a guard over your word to perform it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, perform your word, God. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Father, for increasing, multiplying, God. Every seed that is sown tonight, God, show us who you are. Thank you, Father. Lord, we test, we're testing you, Father, in the name of Jesus, and we know you'll come through. Thank you for every need being met in this ministry, Father. Thank you for every need being met in our personal lives, Father. And, Father, we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. And we'll give you the praise because you're worthy. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Come on, let's shout about it, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord of the harvest, we praise you for multiplying this seed tonight. 
We praise you, Father, for watching over your word and performing it. We give you all of the praise, honor, and the glory. We believe that we receive in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, you may be seated. Ushers, please, let's receive our gifts. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah.
God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Glory to God, the name above every name. Glory to God, we're safe in that name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we love you tonight and we honor you, Lord. With the fruit of our lips, giving praise and thanks to your name. You and you alone are worthy of it. Guide us tonight. Open up our eyes and, and speak to us the way you desire. Lord, without you, I'm nothing. I acknowledge that openly and unashamedly. I am what I am by your grace, Father. You are my sufficiency and my ability. And I look to you by the Spirit of God to feed in me and to me, supply to me, Lord, that which is needed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. All right, you may be seated. Praise God. Now, last Thursday, we didn't uh, continue our lesson on the expressions, you know, that uh, express God's displeasure, uh, but we're going to pick that up tonight and hopefully finish it. We're, we're talking about words that express God's displeasure, and we said there are three words that we are bringing to you that express God's displeasure. Those are abomination, hate, and woe. So look at Proverbs chapter 6, and we'll see two of those words right there in Proverbs 6. The Bible says, starting in verse 16, these six things the Lord what? Hates. So that's a word of displeasure, isn't that right? That expresses God's displeasure. He hates these six things. And then it says, seven are an abomination. So that's another word of displeasure. I hate certain things. Certain things are absolutely an abomination to me. A stench in my nostrils. Something I never want to see. I don't want to tolerate it. It shouldn't be in the lives of my people. It's an abomination. And what are they? A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. I think we need to examine our lives in light of these seven things. Isn't that right? And then Proverbs 29. The Bible says there in verse 27. It says, an unjust man is an abomination to the righteous. An unjust man is, a, and that's the truth, isn't it? You ever run into an unjust man and you're a righteous person? It's like, man, how can they treat me like that? How can they act that way? How can they talk to me that way? You know, et cetera, whatever. But it's, a, it's an abomination to the righteous. And he who is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. You know, the wicked don't want to be around a righteous person. You disturb them. You bother them. You know, you you mess up their plans, their thoughts, their, their environment, you know, the landscape, etc. Luke chapter 16. And that's only because how can two walk together except except they be agreed. In Luke 16, Jesus says. In verse 15, and he said. To them, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. We need to learn what's an abomination to God, isn't that right? What God hates. Because he says right here, what is highly esteemed among men. Boy, man, that's awesome. Man, I wish I could get one of those. Man, that's what I'm striving for. Boy, I tell you, my whole heart is set on being there one day and living on that side of town and being able to accomplish this. What is esteemed highly to men is an abomination to God. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I didn't write the book. All right. But that's exactly what the word of God says. 
Now, let's give the definitions. The word woe is found close to 100 times in the word of God. And woe is defined as great sorrow or distress, things that cause great sorrow, distress or trouble. Let's keep rolling on this. In Hebrew, it means alas and oh, the sense of crying out after lamentation, the passionate expression of grief and sorrow, weeping. Alas, oh, in the Greek, it means exclamation of grief. Alas, woe is a term of warning, alarm, concern, judgment. Woe is a term of warning, alarm, concern, judgment, and hopefully correction. That, that's, that's God's goal always, to get us to correct ourselves, to get back in line, to align ourselves with his word and will. It is in direct relationship and connected to the heart and will of God. Woe is, is in direct relationship to the heart of God, to the will of God. That's why we have those three words that are, you know, expressions of God's displeasure, because it's from his heart. It's, it's about his will, his plan, his purpose, his intent for man. All right. Now, last time we discussed this, we only got to, 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 to uh, the very first woe. And there are several categories of woe in the word of God. And the first one was Jeremiah 23, verse 1, and Ezekiel 34, verses 1 through 5. And we started there because it had to do with me and my office. It had to do with ministers, more specifically shepherds and pastors. And I started there because I wanted you to know that God is saying, judgment to the shepherd. Woe to the shepherd. There's grief awaiting the shepherd that does not conduct him or herself in certain ways and comply and conform to the will and purpose and intent of God. And so I wanted you to know that I have to stand before God one day and give an account of myself relative to being a shepherd. And woe to the shepherd is what those scriptures talk about. But let's move on because we spent the whole lesson on that one, did we not? Let's look at Isaiah chapter 5. In Isaiah chapter 5, you're going to find six woes in Isaiah chapter 5. Isn't that amazing? Six in one chapter. God has some stuff on his mind then, didn't he? Y'all okay tonight? Good. Because we want to know, man, hey, God. Am I walking in areas that are an abomination that you use the word woe about that can cause judgment, that can cause uh, grief and sorrow in my life? Because we sure don't want to do that, do we? And we, we, we reference Matthew 23 where Jesus said, woe to the scribes, woe to the Pharisees, woe to the lawyers, lawyers, woe, 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 over and over and over and over again. And so Jesus is the express image of the father. And the same thing that God would speak woe over, Jesus would do the same thing. It just wasn't an Old Testament word. It's for us as well. The body of Christ. Tell your neighbor, it's for you. Now, in Isaiah chapter five, you have six different woes, starting at verse eight. It says, woe to those who join house to house. They add field to field till there is no place where they may dwell alone in the midst of the land. Now, what does that talk about? That's talking about selfish greed. Woe to the person that has selfish greed. The only thing he thinks about is himself. I'm going to buy more and more property, more and more land. I'm going to push people out. I'm going to be all by myself. I'm going to accomplish everything, and I'm just going to have more and more and more assets and property, everything that anybody can want. And everybody's going to look up to me. Look at all that I own. Selfish greed. Woe to the man that adds fields to field, etc. God has nothing wrong with us prospering, but he sure does look at our hearts. 
Why are we doing what we're doing? What's behind it all? Why do we just keep wanting to accumulate more and more property? What is it for? So God looks at our hearts. And again, there's nothing wrong with prospering. Got to make sure everybody's in the house tonight and y'all doing okay. So it's talking about covetousness in this first woe. Covetousness. All right, let's jump down. And I said selfish greed because I wanted you to, to get that. Covetousness is selfish greed. All right, so that's what that's all about. And so that's a woe. Woe to the man that is, has selfish greed and full of covetousness, always wants more, never, ever satisfied with anything. We don't want to live there, do we? And, and then we jump down to verse 11 and verse 12. It says, woe to those who rise early in the morning that they may follow intoxicating drink, who continue until night. They drink it all day long. <laughs> To wine inflames them. But not only that, but they join the drinking with the harp. You follow that? And the strings, the tambourine, the flute, and wine are in their feasts. See? So, so they listen to music, they drinking, sipping, got their friends over, music, you know, you got a little beat going, da, 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 da. You know, we're not carnal Christians. You know, we shouldn't be drinking. I'm keeping the context here. The wine, the beer, the liquor, the alcohol. Come on, talk to me. Now, I'm not going to go into the distinctions, etc. But if God puts a woe on this, then Jesus did not turn water into wine that would make you drunk, Minister Amen. Amen. And he puts a woe on it. Judgment to the person. Woe is judgment. Woe is grief, alarm. So we need to understand some things because Jesus and God doesn't want you intoxicated. Well, thank half the church. Well, woe to those who rise early in the morning and that they may follow intoxicating drinks. So we're talking about a, a drunkard type conduct. You know, we're, we're talking about drunkards and God says, woe to the drunkards. And, and you find that a little later in the same chapter. And then, you know, it's in Proverbs all over the place, as it were, not all over, but it's in Proverbs. Christians should not be drinking socially. Amen. Don't turn me off. <laughs> drinking should not be a part of the Christian's life. Well, I can do what I want. Yes, you can. But I think we ought to have a heart to please God. Amen. Just like Jesus says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. You tied the cumin and this and that. And then he says, these you ought to have done. But not to leave the other undone. Right? He says, you ought to tithe. You, we shouldn't have problems with tithing. Because it pleases our Father. Amen. Amen. You need to read Matthew 23 in your leisure sometime. But, but you have this woe about drunkards, people that drink. They drink all the time, morning to night. And they accompany that drinking with music and feasting. And, you know, they're hanging out, probably playing cards. That's me now adding that, right? <laughs> That's not the life of a Christian. Absolutely not the life of a Christian. Well, I can do what I want to do. Yes, you can, but you ought to want to please God. Amen. Well, I can do what I want in the confines of my own house. Yes, you can, but the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Amen. Nobody knows what I'm doing in my own house. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Amen. You do that in your own house and you got children, let's say. Your children are watching that. 
and they think this is the appropriate conduct. It's okay to drink beer. It's okay to drink alcohol. It's okay to drink whiskey. It's okay. My dad does it. My mom does it. Then one day they become an alcoholic because of you. You're ashamed of them because they be turned into an alcoholic, but you're the one that they got it from. You're the one that made them think it's okay to drink. Come on, talk to me. Bible says we are the light of the world. We're the light. God is, is light. There's no darkness in God. And that lifestyle is darkness, is it not? Come on. And so it talks about woe to the drunkard, woe to the person that has that type of lifestyle, drunken conduct. And then verse 18, the Bible says, woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as if with a cart rope. Now, all that means is they're sinning by the cart load. They just sin by the cart load. You ever seen a cart? It's a cart load of sin. They're sinning by the cart load. And when it talks about the rope, it's like a rope maker has to keep making more rope because you're continuing to sin. And so God says, woe to the person that just keeps on sinning. You know, we don't have to keep on sinning. We reckon ourselves dead indeed to sin and alive unto God. Is that right? Sin has no more dominion over us. So God says, whoa, whoa to this person whose lifestyle is to sin and to sin. But I want to go back up to verse uh, 11 and 12 again, because I missed out what I wanted to sh say on this last part of verse 12. It, it says that they have the harp and the strings, the tamarind, the flute and wine are in their feasts, but they do not regard the work of the Lord, nor consider the operation of his hand. The King, the Amplified says, but they do not regard the deeds of the Lord, neither do they consider the operation of his hands in mercy and in judgment. In other words, they're doing all of this as if God isn't real. But listen now, it says because of this, the next verse, verse 13, because of this, therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. They have no knowledge that this lifestyle is taking them down the, down the, down the drain. They're disregarding God altogether. And therefore, my people go into captivity without knowing it and because they have no knowledge of God. And they're honorable men, et cetera, famished, if whatever. So I wanted you to see that. But now back to verse 18. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as if with a cart rope. They say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come that we may know it. You know what they're saying? They're mocking God's power. We're going to live the way we want to live. Keep sinning as much as we want to sin. And, and let this so-called so -called God show up. When is he going to show up anyway? Mocking God. You know, sinners get bold. They, they get so, so full of themselves until they act like there is no God. And so here they're saying, they're saying, let the counsel of the, Lord, of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come that we may know it. Amplified puts it this way. Verse 19, it says, who say, let the Holy One make haste and speed his prophesied vengeance. In other words, saying, there's, no, there's no vengeance coming our way. There's no consequences to our lifestyle coming that we may see it. And let the purpose of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come that we may know it. Yeah, where is he at? Is he coming? Show, show up, God, if, we're, if you're God and, and we're doing something wrong. They're mocking God. And people today are mocking God. And God is going to show up. And if you as a Christian, you're mocking God with your lifestyle, one day God shows up. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. 
Are you here? It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. God is a our God is a consuming fire. Is that right or wrong? All right. So the third woe has to do with multiplying or abounding in sin. It has to do with mocking God. And so we don't want to keep going into sin. You know, if you don't cut it off, you're going to keep falling into it. And God gives you the grace to, to lay it aside. Right. And walk away from it. Let's lift your hands and thank God that he gives you the grace and the ability to walk away from those, those things that are displeasing to him. Father, I thank you that you give us the grace and the ability to walk away from those things that are displeasing to you, to walk away from sin. We don't have to keep sinning, sin, abounding in sin, 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 more sin, more sin, going further in the hole, in the ditch, in the gutter. Thank you for pulling us out. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says amen. Hallelujah. All right. Now, the next woe is in verse 20. And you're aware of this scripture. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for, for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So, listen, there's some problems on the horizon for people that are living this way and that are perceiving things this way and and uh, and, and uh, believe this way. And so we're talking about all across our nation and all across our world. They're calling evil good and good evil and sweet, bitter and bitter, sweet. And God says, woe to those people. Woe to those people and, and woe to us if we if we're the same way. We, we know the difference between right and wrong, don't we? Yes. What are those people that think there's nothing wrong with abortions? What do those people think there's nothing wrong with homosexuality? Come on, talk to me. I, I want to give you a scripture right here, Isaiah chapter 3, because even homosexuality has a woe to it. Isaiah chapter 3. But in our nation, they, they don't call it sin or wrong. They don't call abortion sin or wrong. They don't call the racism sin or wrong. They don't call all the destruction that took place all last summer sin or wrong. They called it good. They're burning down the cities and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, they have a right to express themselves. You heard that last summer, didn't you? And uh, Isaiah chapter 3, I know this is not one of these real popular messages, but it's one that we need to hear so that we can understand what pleases God, what displeases God, what is a woe to God, etc. It says here in verse nine, the look on their countenance witnesses against them. Notice the look on their face witnesses against them. You ever said to your child or somebody, man, your face gives you away. I mean, I can just look at you and tell you lying. You, you ever said something like that? I, I can tell you wrong. I mean, you're, you give it away just the way you look, the way you act, the way you talk, the way you won't look in my face, the way you're doing this or that. And so here it says here in verse 9 of Isaiah 3. Turn right back over here in my Bible. It says the look on their countenance witnesses against them and they declare their sin as Sodom. Their sin is what? Sodom. Now, we know about Sodom, don't we? Yes. Sodom and Gomorrah. Is that right? Yes. That's homosexuality. That's lesbianism. Yes. That's perversion. Yes. They declare their sin as Sodom. They do not hide it. That's like our nation today. They're not hiding it. Drag queens in schools and in libraries, etc. They don't hide it. Parades. Gender ideology. They don't hide it. And notice what God says. Woe to their soul. Judgment. Grief. To their soul. For they have brought evil upon themselves. So there's woes in the word of God. These are words that express God's what? Displeasure. All right. Let's look again. We were looking at verse uh, 20. 
And we'll look, now look at verse 21. It says, woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. So the fourth woe has to do with distorting God's moral standards. You know, it has to do with no sense of right and wrong or distorting God's moral standards. God has moral standards. And so that's why he says, woe to those that call good evil and evil good. You're, you're violating my moral standards. You know, shacking up violates his moral standards. Come on, talk to me. Stealing, lying, adultery, etc., violates his moral standards. Right? All right. Next week I'll preach something happier. I can't promise you that, but I know, I know this is what we need to hear. And so it says, woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. He says, woe to them. What are those people that are arrogant and cocky and haughty? I think they got it all together and so intelligent, so smart, uppity, better than somebody else. The Bible tells us to humble ourselves, Amen. not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. Isn't that what the Bible says? Amen. And so just understand, and you, you, you know scriptures that deal with this. And so let's stay humble. Let's stay little in our own eyes. Let's trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not into our own understanding in all of our ways. And he shall. But notice, woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. And the Bible says in Proverbs, don't be wise in your own conceits. Just don't do that. We don't have all of the answers. We don't know it all. We don't have it all together. God's at work in us, both to will and do of his good pleasure. So arrogance and pride is something that God says woe to. And then in verse 22 and 23, woe to men mighty at drinking wine, woe to men valiant for mixing intoxicating drink, who justify the wicked for a bribe and take away justice from the righteous man. Isn't that something? Justify the wicked for a bribe and take away justice from the righteous man. God is saying woe to the judges and to leadership that pervert justice. Woe to them that pervert justice. And we see that all throughout our nation. And I'm not going to go into, you know, some of the things that's been going on, but all we have to do is think of some of the latest things that's been going on, headlines, et cetera, the court cases and everything like that, perverting justice. And many of that is for a bribe. We don't know what they're getting behind, behind closed doors to, to lie and to, and to try to get somebody off the hook. Come on, talk to me. So he's obviously talking to leaders that sit in a position where they can determine the outcomes of things. And don't you do it for a bribe and you pervert justice for a bribe so you can get ahead in some way on your own. And God says, woe to them. And, and there's some judges in our nation around the world. They're in deep, deep trouble with God. Are you hearing this? I'm talking about from our Supreme Court all the way down to local judges. Deep, deep trouble with God because they're perverting justice. Perverting it. And we need to understand that's what the word of God talks about. It's a woe to God. All right. So perversion of justice. So those are the six woes that we find in this particular uh, chapter here. God does never expect us to justify the wicked and condemn the righteous. And they've tried to do that over and over again this past year. Is that right or wrong? Yeah. They just try to do it in a, in a very, 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 you know, uh, I guess, case. I'll just put it this way. You know, um, I would have defended myself, Dwayne. If somebody came up to me, get ready to kill me, I would have blew them away if I had something to blow them away with. Yeah. But they tried to pervert that. White racist, supremacist, whatever. And yet 
They didn't put the, they didn't put the knowledge out there that he shot white people. Right. Right. They, they tried to make it seem like he was shooting black people. Yep. To keep a calling good evil evil good going on in our nation. There's, there's some woe, some judgment and some grief coming to some things if they don't repent. Coming to people I'm talking about if they don't repent and don't get themselves together. And we need to make sure as a church we're not falling into that lying spirit rhetoric, perverted spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? Spirit of discord, division, things like that. All right, are you with me on this lesson? Let's look at uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Verses 9 through 12. You know, when we were talking about in Isaiah chapter 5, when we were talking about drinking all day long and the music and all that, they, they were following the pattern, uh, you know, and it's still in our world society today of eating, drinking, and being merry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what life is about. Eat, drink, and be merry. That's not what life is about. Life is Jesus. Yeah. Life is helping your brothers and your sisters. Yeah. Life is securing your eternity in God. Yeah. Are you following this? Don't raise your children or anybody to believe that it's all about stuff. Eat, drink, and be merry. God said, Jesus said, gave that parable about the man that had, uh, had so much, you know, and so he said, what can I do with all this? I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger barns, and then I'll take my ease and eat, drink, and be merry. And, and it says, thou fool, this night, this night your soul is required of you. Thou fool, to think that way, that all you want to do is have a good time in life, being lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Amen. Don't ever, ever live that way. And, and, and Solomon in his messed up state, he talked about that that's what life was, but he was messed up in his thinking. He was confused. And then later he says, let me tell you the conclusion of the whole matter. You fear God and you keep his commandments. Do what God says and reverence God. And don't do what the world is doing and don't do what some of your friends might be doing. Just do what God tells you to do and reverence God and don't live a lifestyle of stuff and having fun all of the time and trying to do everything to have fun. That's all you think about is enjoyment and pleasure, that that's what life is about because it is not. Say it is not. Yeah. All right. Ecclesiastes. I mean, what did I say? Ecclesiastes 4, right? Let's look at that now. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, it says here, I'm going to turn over there. I don't want to look at it in my own Bible here. It says in verse 9, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls. God says there's grief, there's misery. For a person that if he falls, he's alone. That doesn't mean you have to be married. It means you need a good friend. You need a good friend. You just need one person. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You call that person, they're there. It doesn't matter what you're facing. You call that person, they're there. You know you got one person like that. Then you're not alone. Is that right? Some people think, oh, that's me. I need to get married. No, you don't need to get married until it's time to get married. Isn't that right? Because you can get married trying to, you know, uh, you know have a solution to, based on this scripture here, and you married the wrong person. And you're still alone. You're alone emotionally. Are you following what I'm saying? You're alone when it comes to planning the future. You're alone when it comes to raising the children. You're alone when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, doing things together, et cetera. So you, you just know that all you need is a good friend. Father, give every one of my brothers and sisters that need a good friend, a good friend, Father. So they won't have the grief of being alone if something happens in their lives. 
They'll know they got a prayer partner. They know that they have somebody that will help financially, somebody that will get out of bed at night and drive to where they are. Somebody, Father, that will stand by their side. Jesus, you sent them out two by two. Give each and every one of my brothers and sisters that type of friend that loves you. God and will stand by their, their side in Jesus' mighty name. So it says, woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not what? It's not quickly broken. So we wanted to throw that out there about the word woe. All right. Um, so in essence, friendship, companionship. Believe God for that, and that's what we just did, how important it is not to be alone. I'm going to give you two or three more, and then we'll shut it down. Now, this one I'm going to give you is not to make light of anybody, but it is simply to give you the principle that God has here. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. It says here in the 16th verse, Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child. You think about that. Think about cognitive skills of a certain king. They say you become twice a child. We, we must understand that maturity and righteousness must be in key positions. Not novices, not puppets, not people that will take bribes. Not people that you can't trust. See, you can be 40 years old and a child. You can be 60 and a child. You're just in a grown-up body. But your thinking, your perspective, your attitude. I mean, you got grown people trying to look like a teenager. And they're 80 years old, 60 years old. That's a child thinking. Don't get mad at me. I'm telling you the truth. Trying to wear fashions of, uh, of the latest generation. And number one, your body ain't the same. Number two, it, it takes away from your dignity, from the longevity of your life. Let the older women teach. Let them be an example. Right? And so, and so your, your, your age doesn't necessarily call you mature or seasoned or experienced. So he says, whoa, whoa here. You know, to the to the land whose whose king is a child. And so just understand that principle. Don't put people in positions that don't belong there. When inwardly their child. Maturation isn't there. Intelligence isn't there. Know-how isn't there, on and on and on. Are you with me there? Amen. All right. So we're not trying to make light of anybody, but we wanted to bring that out, that we have to understand that leadership should be beyond childhood, right? Yeah. Now, let's give you another one here. In Isaiah chapter 30, verses 1, 2, and 3. All right, it says, woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, 
who take counsel, but not of me. So woe to the person that will go to ungodly counsel, go to the world, go to the unbeliever, go to the carnal Christian and try to get counsel. Woe to that person. In other words, he's saying there will be grief for that person. There will be hard times. There will be, there will be ditches. There will be challenges that they don't have to have if they had gone to the right counsel. Right? Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord. Woe, I mean, who take counsel, but not of me, and who devise plans, but not of my spirit. You know, we need to make sure that whatever we're planning, we've prayed it through. I'm talking about anything major, significant, anything of value, of importance. We need to make sure we've prayed to get the heart of God on it. Are you with me on that? And who devise plans, but not of my spirit, that they may add what? Sin to sin. Let's read on. Who walked to go down to Egypt and have not asked my advice. They want to go to Egypt. Egypt is their answer. Egypt has their the, the solution. Egypt has the might, the power, the strength, the ability. Who go down to Egypt and have not asked my advice to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. They go to the world to strengthen themselves. Instead of going to God and let God direct you and navigate you through things, right? To strengthen themselves, let's go back, please. To strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. I'm not trusting anything in this world. I'm not trusting on social security. My trust is not in social security. My trust is not in the economic system. My trust is not in anything in this world. I'm not looking to this world to strengthen me and to make me safe and secure and to always be able to get me out of anything. Only God can do that. Amen. Only God can make you safe and secure. Amen. And so anyway, it says, let's read on now. It says, uh, who, therefore, the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame. The world will be your shame. You're trusting in the world, looking to the world. Well, you know, I'm being told all I got to do this, man. This is the best way to do this. Who are you getting your counsel from? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. All right. Now, we're going we're gonna to stop right there. I've gone long enough. Good. Let's stand to our feet. Isaiah 6, 5 is our last one. You can stand. We can, I, we can do this standing. Isaiah 6, 5, because this is what we all should experience. Isaiah 6, 5. You know the story here in Isaiah. They'll put on the screen, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple, right? Can, can we, and let's go back up to verse 2. His train filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. Two he covered his feet. With two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. This is what Isaiah is seeing. And when he saw this, notice the next verse. He says, woe is me. This is what we all should experience. For I am undone. You say, what do you mean we should experience that? We should experience seeing God to the point where we say, oh, my gosh, help me, Jesus. Work on me, Jesus. Oh, I'm so undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of all. We all should get to that point one day in our lives. Where, where we come to our senses, oh, my God, I'm not all that I want to be. I'm not all that I thought I was. Oh, God, there's so much work that needs to be done in me. That only happens when you see Jesus more, when you see who he is. Are you following what I'm saying? So, Father, give us a, a clear view of you, a clear picture of Jesus. God, and, 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 and let, let it shine on us. Let it reflect how much we need him. Show how much, how desperately, God, we need to continue to draw near to him. 
to have him at work in us, both to will and do of his good pleasure, perfecting the things that concern us, God. The good work that he begun, that, he, that he'll complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And it calls us not to be critical of others, God. And it calls us, God, not to judge others when we know we have so much that need to be improved in our own lives and corrected in our own lives. Father, this lesson of words that express your displeasure, God, help us to walk away from the things that hurt your heart, that grieve your heart, in the name of Jesus. You brought us out to be our God. And so we thank you for that. Deliver us, God, from habits and vices, all uncleanness, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's thank God for his work inside of us. Father, we thank you for your work in us. Thank you for purging and cleansing in the name of Jesus. Thank you for reformation. Thank you for changing us for your, to your glory. We're going from glory to glory. God, and we'll not give up, Lord. We won't give up. As we stay with you, Father, God, you purge us and you cleanse us and you deliver us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. All right, believers, praying quietly uh, under your breath and we'll extend some invitations. So those of you that are watching through live streaming, uh, please call the number on the screen, 704-525-8638. If you need to give your life to Christ, rededicate your life to God, get filled with the Holy Spirit or have a church home. In other words, believe that this church is where God wants you to be. Call us at 704-525-8638. Somebody is ready to receive your, your phone call and talk with you about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. God loves you. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on God. He cares about you. Call and let us be a part of things turning around in your life by pointing you to Jesus, encouraging you in the word of God, and through prayer. And if need be, we'll send you materials that will help you to grow in your walk with God. 704-525-8638. Thank you for joining us tonight. The next time we'll be live streaming will be this Friday morning, 8 o'clock, for our live telecast. Join us Friday morning. God bless you. Thank you again for being with us tonight. Now, in our auditorium here,